What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. So we were just chatting, chatting away, getting to know each other a little bit. First of all, I want to say thank you for coming on the show, Colin. Of course, of course. I'm I'm psyched to be here and thank you for having me, actually, more importantly. Oh, any any time, man. Like this is I was just telling you a few minutes ago, this is, I love doing this, and I guess I can give you a quick background and I ask you for yours right after. I started this show about two and a half years ago now. I started it two years, this January will be two years, this past January will be two years, and before I started the podcast, I was doing like, you know how they have like the horror boxes, and people do unboxings on YouTube? I was doing that, but I was doing it in a Facebook, I was doing it on Facebook Live in my horror group, and I went from that to... My wife was just saying, because I kept saying, I was like, one of these days I'm going to start a horror podcast. And she kept saying, well, why don't you start one, blah, blah, blah. So eventually, I was at work one day, and she ordered me, like, a microphone. She must, she knows nothing about the whole equipment stuff, so she must have Googled. I'm sure she Googled, like, podcast equipment. So she ordered me a microphone, a mixer, and headphones. It all came together. And she, here's where she made the mistake, because she ordered it. It came home, which is great. That's fine. But she took a picture of it and showed it to me while I'm at work. So now I'm over here thinking, like, should I go to my supervisor and pretend I'm six so I can go home and play with this stuff? <laughs> That's awesome. But I did. I, I ended up staying. I was like, no. I, I was like, you know what? I, I got to stay home. I'm, I only have a few hours or whatever. Yeah. There's only five, six hours left. I'll, I'll just talk about it. <laughs> but I was really like, it was one of those things. It was, you know, it's like a kid on Christmas. Like, should I go yeah. So it went from that to I would use that. And I had like, I'd have like close friends and family members, like cousins and stuff. Just we'd hang out either at my house or one of their houses and just record. And I was putting out episodes like that. It started out like that. And eventually it grew from just me sharing it in Facebook groups and other Facebook groups and reaching out to people here and there. A lot said yes, a lot said no, which didn't bother me either way. And then now it's just coming out to where, I mean, Steve reached out to me, which was freaking like, I was just like, wow. He, which, you know, you know, Steve, and he reached mm-hmm, out to me. He was mm-hmm. like, um, I have, he had like, he sent me four people at first, and I believe you were one of the first four, four or five people at first. You were one of the first ones. And I just talked to him the other day. He sent me some more people that I got to contact. I just didn't have time to yet. And that stuff is, stuff like that is so humbling and feels so good because I'm like, I do this as a hobby. I don't do it as, don't, don't get me wrong. If I got paid for it, I would definitely get paid for it. Like, I love what I do, but I don't do it for the money. I do it because I just love horror. It's just, there's just something about this genre that's so freaking connecting and so beautiful and rewarding. And I mean, just, just yesterday, actually, I got a box from Canada, right? So a fellow podcaster, cause I do like a, I have a, my, on my YouTube channel, I do like, I'm starting to do giveaways and stuff. I'm like building up to do giveaways. And he reached out to me. He was like, Hey man, he was like, if it's cool, I would like to send you a bunch of stuff to, you could either keep some stuff, which I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah. give away, give away stuff. And I was like, 
that's free. I was like, that's so awesome, man. Yeah, that's amazing. He sent, he sent it to me. Like, I got it yesterday. He sent me a little note that pretty much said, like, he he appreciates my support because I support his podcast and, like, anything they do horror-wise. And just what I do for horror in general. Like, I try to support it as much as possible, especially, like, the indie scene more so. Don't get me wrong. I love horror as a whole, but I, I'm supporting the indie scene more just because that voice. Like, I, I feel we all need a voice. And, like, I like that my platform is becoming that voice for others or that platform for others to kind of, you know, get their voices out there and be heard. And it's cool when someone's like, hey, you know, I'm a mess. Like, hey, how'd you hear about me? Oh, I heard about you from another podcast. Or I listen to, you know, I, I follow so-and-so's movie. They're on your show. So I figured I'd check out your podcast. And vice versa, just like things like that, like word to mouth. It's crazy how word to mouth is still around. Even, even like via social media, but even via like friends, like, hey, check, you should check this show out. You should yeah. Check this show out. And I just, I love it. So yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much where I'm at now. I, I hope to grow more. And I would like, again, I would love to be able to make this, even if it was like a part-time type of thing, as far as bringing in part, whatever part-time money is. I mean, if it, if it became full-time, as far as bringing in full-time, I'd still keep my full-time job, but Again, I do it just out of the passion and love for it. I feel like for something like this, I remember I was on a, um, a panel a few years ago and it was a podcasting panel. And one of the questions that somebody asked was like, do you guys make money off of this? And we all just laughed. And yeah. we all, like we all gave our answer. And I was like, no, I was like, we don't make money off of it. I was like, I'm not saying it's not impossible because you can get ads, you can get sponsors. But I was telling the people, I was like, if you're going to, I said, if you're going into podcasting to make money, you're going in for the wrong reasons. I said, because you're going to do, I think I said like 10 episodes max, if that, and you're going to burn yourself out because you're not going to see any, you're not going to see any money coming in. You might not see too many downloads. I said, but if you're doing it for a passion to have fun, cause you enjoy whatever topic you're talking about with your podcast, if you enjoy that, it was a horror convention. So I was saying horror. I said, you're going to last a lot longer and things may or may not come. But I said, you're going to enjoy it. And I said, people will enjoy your show more because they can tell you're really passionate about it. You can, you can kind of read off of somebody's energy and listen just by listening to an interview or a review or whatever, if they're in it for just like, you know, yeah, I like this movie. It was cool. And then that's all they say, you know, and then, you know, I want to get some ads. Cool. That's cool. I want some ads too, but I'm not doing it for the ads. I'm doing it for the passion and to meet other horror fans. Like it's awesome meeting other horror fans around the freaking world. That's the craziest thing. It's, I never thought I'd be talking. Like I had somebody from, my, from Australia on my podcast. That's nuts. I had somebody from the UK on my podcast. That's crazy. Yeah, that's amazing. So now what about, how, how about you though? What got you into like, I mean, honestly, it's funny. I'm, I think I very similar in some levels is that, um, you know, when I was, uh, when I was a kid, I was exposed to movies big time mm -hmm. and I always loved them. My family's like all about movies and I just, we really liked them. And I don't know. I mean, early on, I was always fascinated by cameras and stuff and being interested in film. And so I remember, um, when I was, uh, I think I was, uh, I would say, I'm trying to think, eighth grade, maybe ninth grade, eighth grade, I'd say, the summer between eighth and ninth grade, actually, my friend of mine, my, a friend of mine, I found, we found a, 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 a eight millimeter video camera, not a film camera, a video camera in his dad's uh, closet. So <laughs> we started playing with it. My friend wasn't into film at all. I mean, he liked movies, but... I wanted to make movies and I was like, Oh man, we should make movies. And he's like, really? Well, like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know. Just like write some scripts and just like shoot movies. So we shot these ridiculous, absurd movies. We were kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and then when a whole summer, I remember my friends uh, would come over other friends and I forced, I'd be like, come on, man, let's make it. Like they wanted to play basketball, football, something else. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, 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 let's make it. We, we made a serial killer movie about a Swedish chiller, serial killer. We made a, a, a horror movie about spaghetti that comes, re, gets animated and has a, a genius IQ and tries to kill people. I mean, just dumb stuff like that. And, um, and I remember just, just being so into it. I mean, I, I was, and I, I guess that was the, that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then time went by and, you know, I went to, I mean, I went to college and everything. And my junior year, I decided I wanted to go to film school. That's you know, awesome. that's what I, that, that's when I was like, I, I think, yeah, I think this is what I want to do for my life, you know? So I went to film school in New York City, uh, incredibly insane, awesome time. But, but where, where what you said a moment ago resonated with me was I, I studied camera, cinematography, mm -hmm. right? So that's my job. Like, that's like, that's how I make money. That's how I, I've 
had a, been able to build a house and have a life in that way. Right. Yep. Um, but about, I'd say eight years ago or so, um, I, I just, I was kind of like, I was like, I really want to try to direct. I want to make a film, you know? And my wife told me some really cool, creepy stories about La Llorona, the, the, the horror legend, La Llorona. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really cool. I was like, man, that's really cool. <laughs> but I didn't really have money or like any access to anything. And to be honest, I still didn't have the know-how yet or confidence. So I decided, I was like, well, let, let, me, let me make like a found footage style, like POV style movie. So my friend and I did it. And, and, my, and the big overarching th- theme here is that you were saying, you were like, do, we make, do you make any money doing podcasting? And, and that you were like, you know, if you're getting into this to make money, podcasting, like you're, you're not going about it the right way. And that's exactly how I feel about making movies. Mm-hmm. The movies I make are made for insanely low budgets. And I don't, I never start out or never go with it. The notion of like, oh man, I want to make, you know, hundred thousand dollars off this movie or anything. It's more, I just, I have to tell these stories and it starts from there and it ends with that. Like I just, I love talking about film. I love making films. I love writing films. And so it's like, I agree with you. I think that you have to start where you're what with what you were saying. You have to start out. It's got to be that you just really like it as mm-hmm. a thing. Podcasting, writing, whatever it is. And then as time goes on, you develop. And, and I'm sure when you first started to now, you've learned a lot of different things and a lot of new oh. interview techniques or techniques about reviewing and everything. Same for me. My first movie to, to Remy's Demons, the, my latest movie, I, you know, I've grown a million times mm-hmm. because I made a bunch. I've, I've messed up a million times. And so you just keep learning. So yeah, I agree with you 100%, man. It's all about like, you got to really have a passion for it. Oh, you do. And it, it's funny you say messed up because I got a story about that, or that. My very first episode, right? My wife got me this little recorder. And it was me, my good friend Rob, and my brother Henry. We were going to a con called Scaracon. And it was Rob's first time going to a horror convention ever. And I brought this little recorder. And this would be an idea. I didn't even talk to them until we got in the car. I was like, you know what? Maybe I, I'm starting this podcast. It was supposed to be my first episode. So I was like, yo, get in the car. We're driving. I was like, you know what, guys? Because you know, you know how guys are. We're, we're just us guys together. We're having random crazy conversations anyway. And we were talking horror. I was like, yo, let's make this the first episode. I'm about to hit record. Let's just talk. We'll talk horror and randomness and whatever on the way there. So we did it. We did it on the way from wherever we left to our first rest stop just to gas up, stretch it quickly. And so I had the little recorder thing. I, t- I turned the recorder on and I hit record, right? And then when we stopped at the first rest stop, the only rest stop, I turned it off. Turn it back on, we get on the road again. I did the same thing on the way home. I get home. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me put this up on my computer, the second, third. And at the time, my, my brother produced like 100 of my episodes, at least 100, 101 of my episodes. So I, would, I was going to get it to him so he can edit it for me. And I go to plug the thing in my computer. And I'm like, where the hell is it? Where is it? I finally, you know how us men are. We never read directions ever. <laughs> I, so I finally flipped the thing over. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So what it was, I turned it on, and hit, turned it on and I hit record, right? And the, there was two different switches. So you have to hit the other switch down when you're done recording. Hit it down and hit save. I never hit save. So I lost like uh. an hour and a half to it's two hours of funny content. Oh, I hate and that. Oh, that's the worst. It is, but I'm not, I'm happy it happened in a sense of, I'm happy it happened. I'm happy it happened with the people it happened with just because like I've known them. So it's like, it's not a big deal. It wasn't like versus like for me and you, like if I came on here and you know, for me and you, which I'm sure you would understand, but it, it would look a little bad if I'm like, yo, I lost everything. I forgot, I forgot to hit record. I forgot to hit save, <laughs> which <laughs> I got another funny thing, but uh, yeah. So I learned from that and I tell that story a lot. Cause like, People who start off with something, I'll say with like podcasting, you didn't say with films, you're going to have these technical difficulties. You're going to have these boneheaded mistakes. You shouldn't let that deter you. You shouldn't let that stop you from doing something that you're really passionate about, even if it's, even if it's just a hobby. I won't even say just a hobby because I feel like hobby is very important too. You need something to kind of get your mind around other things. Don't let that deter you. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that crush you. Just learn from it and keep moving on from it. Cause like I went from that. There's been other times where I lost episodes because my computer, like I had older computers that just crashed and I lost a bunch of episodes. Just the other night, my friend and I were recording through Zoom. And like when you hit end video on Zoom, 
it automatically starts uh, converting the video for you. Yeah. So I hit end video on Zoom, right? And I was doing something, wasn't paying attention, and I shut my computer down. <laughs> Oh no! And, and it was so. It was the other. It was Thursday night, and it was so freaking hot up here. So I go downstairs. I'm, you know, I'm getting ready for to go in and take a shower and stuff. And I'm thinking about it myself. I'm like, shit. I'm in the shower. I'm like, shit. I was like, did I not? I was like, I don't remember if I let Zoom convert that video or not. So I'm in this, I, I get done in the shower, get dressed, and run upstairs, turn everything back on, and I'm looking for the video, and I'm like, damn it! How did I do this? So I text I, my friend was already asleep, but I messenger money was like yo i was like we might have to redo this episode because i just shut the computer down like right after next day we get up i bring the computer downstairs to edit because it's so hot in the attic and i just happened to open up zoom as soon as i open up zoom it's like do you want the video to convert and like, yes <laughs> i didn't message him or text him until it was like 95 percent done i was like yo we're good never mind Forget oh, what I wow. just <laughs> so i was so freaking happy about that so again this another thing is i'll say for people double triple quadruple check what you did save 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 and save again and i'm gonna invest i'm actually gonna invest in like a 10 terabyte hard drive just because with the video thing it takes up so much room but invest in a hard drive just so you have somewhere to save stuff just to just to be safe not only for extra room but just to save stuff in case something happens to your computer or whatever the case may be and yeah i mean i man i have a on my desk right now where i work i have i don't know probably 15 to 20 hard uh, external hard drives. Um, I'm like, like, I'll give you an example with Remy's Demons. I bought two drives when I started the movie, mm -hmm. two brand new drives. And I already have 15, like I said. I bought two new ones. I labeled one Remy's Demons Master, labeled two, let Remy's Demons back up. And then two of my old ones, I put everything on it. I, 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 yeah, I quadruple sort of back up everything. But my other thing is like when I edit like the films, <laughs> I'm so scared of that. Cause I know guys, I know people that have edited and then like something happened and it, it, their computer crashed and they lost the whole pro program. And they, they have to go back and either restart or find like an old saved version mm -hmm. and, and start from there. So that's like my biggest thing. And I remember a long time ago, an editor told me, a professional editor, he was like, he goes, always a, a, a copy of your project and, and store it somewhere. Mm -hmm. he, every time you finish that day, go on, go in, save it as a copy. And that copy, just call it, wait, you know, I usually just put the date so yep. that I know the timestamp. And then I always take that and I put it on four drives just in case, like, let's say two days later, I'm editing, computer crashes, everything's gone. Mm -hmm. I can always go to that copy and re reboot it. So I agree with you. Not, and then on your other story, like about not recording, I mean, I, I, every single shoot I've done, whether it's Domestic Hell, Remy's Demons, Bloody Drama, every movie I've done, there's, there's at least five shoot days where I show up and I don't have the proper um, um, props. Mm -hmm. I didn't, and the actors are like, aren't I supposed to have like a hatchet in the scene? And I'm like, oh, I left the hatchet at home. And I'm literally like, I'm like, I don't have time to go home and come back. We, I mean, my shoots are always like, just, we don't have time, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I have to literally on the fly be like, rewrite that scene. Like, okay, so you don't have a hatchet. Why don't we do this? And like, we just thought we have to like spitball. And mm -hmm. that's kind of part of no budget filmmaking too, is, is you have to be able to roll with the, with the punches. And that's what I like about, I mean, I know it's different because you're doing movies and I'm doing podcasts, but I like how the similarities are, especially with the whole independent thing. I don't have a backing behind me as far as like, as far as a network, like I have supporters, of course, which I'm, I know you do as well. But as far as like a network, that's like, boom, check out this podcast. Here's some money to back you and all this other stuff. But the thing I like about that is you learn so much by that. Like you learn so many different things versus if you had that back and you had that extra hands on deck as far as, and I'm not saying you don't have any hands on deck for both of us. I'm just saying, you know, that extra hands on deck because you have the money to pay for that. The yeah. good thing about not having that is you have to learn. You like, you learn everything about what you're doing. Like you learn so much about your, you know, for your directing. I learned so much about podcasting and now I'm learning more about editing. Like I had my brother edit for a while for me, but now he does like seal coding. So he doesn't really have time. Plus my niece just turned, he has a six year old daughter. So that comes first and he has another job. So it's like, you know, that I understand that he has to put that in the back burner. So that, you know what, I'll, I want to start editing anyways, because I'll always edit my YouTube videos. I'm like, I might as well edit my audio stuff too. And I'm, I told him, I said, 
if anything ever blows up, you're still getting credit. You're still my producer. You're still getting paid if that ever happened because you were there from day one and you're my brother. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's one thing I do love about the independent thing is you can do it. Another thing is you can do whatever you want. Nobody's going to be like, no, you know what? I don't like this. I want you to read. No, this is mine. This is a hundred percent me. You, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm sure you're like, this is how it's going to be. You might take advice or take some ideas of like, Hey, I have an idea to help you out, but it's not like, okay, if I don't do this, I can't get this done because you don't like it, which I do love. But my question before I forget and the Remy's demons, there's a lot of purple lighting and just purple in that movie. And now I'm seeing this domestic hell cover. Now is Sony's favorite color purple or was it just like a reason for it? No, there's a reason for it. I mean, it's definitely, you know, what's funny and the, the two movies don't link at all in that way. Like that poster behind you um, was done by a guy out of San Antonio named Mark um, Rios. Mm -hmm. um, he's an amazing graphic designer and, and he's a filmmaker too. But, um, he um out of nowhere he's trying to build like a poster company like movie okay. posters because his graphic design stuff so it was crazy because the the poster on on um on uh, amazon prime is a different poster that was actually the one that the the production count the the producers chose mm -hmm. uh sorry distributors chose <laughs> so that purple in domestic hell was just mark's that was his thing Okay. I actually didn't in any way like, you know, that, that was just, he came up with the purple in Remy's demons. Yeah. The purple sort of symbolizing, um, uh, Regan, his mother, okay. it's her symbolic like color and her color template that involves her. And as you, um, as the film goes on, the, the, um, the, 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 changes. the color changes. Yeah. I noticed that uh, like, emoting something totally different. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. Like I said, I want to rewatch the movie and do like a review on it. I don't want to spoil it. But um, I noticed that because, like, when they were eating dinner, the lighting was purple. And then when you go in her room, like, right there, the lighting's purple. And, I'm, and then when you go in his – when you show his room, he has a purple blanket on his bed. I noticed – I'm like – I was talking to my wife. I was like, there's a lot of – like, I was listening to the movie and watching it. I was like, there's a lot of purple in this movie. I was like, I, I, was like, I have to ask him about this purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah I try – I try – I mean, I, I try really hard to try to – because of my background in cinematography, I try to incorporate – color as much as possible in, mm -hmm. in domestic hell color plays a big role in the movie um more in in wardrobe and and sort of area whereas mm -hmm. in remy's demons i i wanted to explore color and lighting a little bit more so a lot of the color values in remy's demons happen to be correspond with lighting okay uh <laughs> like the color of light whereas in in domestic hell it's more has to do with wardrobe and what they're wearing and and, and it also symbolizes their change, their character change as time goes on. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I was just, I, I was, I kept thinking and thinking and thinking. I was like, this has to mean something. Because <laughs> you, you just see, like, I, I like it. Like, what you just said, though, I like how you answered that question. And I like how it makes sense now. Like, just sometimes people are just like, oh, I have these colors in here just because I like the color. But this actually means something. It's symbolic. And like you were saying, and how I did see also how after certain things happen in the movie, the color changes, the colors change, which I thought was awesome. And now it makes a lot more sense. Well, you know, and, you and, and, and jumping in on our, our earlier conversation, like what's really cool is, is that when I first started in, in making my own movies, mm -hmm. um, a particular, my first feature, cause I did two short films way back, but my first feature sleepover, <laughs> I was so busy chasing my tail and trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. that I didn't have the mastery of the, of, of, of what I needed to do as a director yeah. to, to really entertain the layers of filmmaking because like filmmaking is, is, you know, you've got the, the moving image, right? So you got an image you have to deal with. You've got sound that like what we're doing right now, sound. And then you've got um, the actors and acting and performance and script and story. So it's like, you have all these elements. I really could only focus on one element. And as we, as I went on, I started being able to kind of layer it more and start to see the other layers for what their values. And that's why by the time I got to domestic hell, I was like, no, no, no. I think it's important that I utilize color, like color. It's I'm shooting color, you know, color movies. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to, I need to, why am I not playing with reds and greens and browns and blues and stuff like that? So and then when I got to Remy's, I was like, I was like, okay, you know, and definitely color wardrobe in Remy's matters too, by the way. But um, I'm just trying to like 
each time I do it, I get a little bit better about all the layers that go into it. And, and I think it's the same for you, I'm sure, that when you first started, you were probably really focused on certain things. But as you got more familiar and more used to it, now you're like, okay, I can do this and I can go here and I can go there and I can worry about this, you know? It's funny you say that because, again, with, this, with the whole green screen thing, like I'm still learning as far as I, like how important lighting actually is with these green screens. Like I, st I can still get my lighting. It's tough because, again, I'm in the attic so you can only do so much. But yeah, I, like I want to get one more time, so one more light kind of behind me some just to get the lighting a little bit better so, you know, so it doesn't do these shadows and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I'm in a, such a tight space, so I have to like find like a light strip or something that's bright enough to light behind it, but not too bright to where it messes up the screen. Yeah. But what I'm getting at too is <clears throat> like with this green screen thing. Before, when I first started using Zoom, I didn't know that I can have the visual background either. I can either have it like this, or I can do like a video of either ro you know rotating pictures or whatever, or like the trailer in the back behind me. But um. Before I knew you could do this with Zoom, it was just like my regular green. So you just see my regular green screen as I'm recording, right? <laughs> and, then, and my program to edit, I would have to plug it in after. But again, I didn't know. And, you know, that was so crazy because it would pick up. Like if I was to do it now, for example, it would pick up your background and my background with the green screen thing. So I'd have to like make it just on my side of the thing. It was just oh, it was yeah, a I whole bunch shit. of stuff. And then once I finally figured out the visual background, I was like, <laughs> I wish I would have known about this from day one, but <laughs> it, it, live and learn. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll go back to saying like, as far as I can, like, I've been saying this for weeks now for you can say for months now, people that want to get into film or podcasting of just these two, cause we're having a conversation about these two. And I'll say like film cause it's visual and the podcasting with the visual podcasting or even just audio. I say do it and whatever you do, put it out. And I say that because not only do you get people to listen to it or check it out and see which, how you started from day one to, say, day 100, but you see how much you've grown over these weeks, over these months. Like, just in the past couple of months, I've gotten better at this video, at this this right here. Like, I can send you a link from what I was talking about <laughs> where I had to, like, squish th scrunch stuff in there and then where I'm at now, and I'm just like, this is freaking amazing. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my progress just from watching YouTube videos and then just from trial and error, just trying things on my own. Like, okay, well, if I do this, 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 it looks so much better than if I do it like this. And it's, there's been days when I've, I, like, I can't tell you how many times I've switched this attic around, just this little area around and how many different screens, like this, this right here on my right, you can't see, it. I'll show you when we're done recording, I'll turn the background thing off. <laughs> this right here on my right, I have like a, it's a green tablecloth that I got off of Amazon. And then this behind me is like two green screens. And then I have another green screen thing over here, which is pretty much just green sheets, as you know. And I did that just to have it so the picture can be stretched out and, you know, wide and all that. And then right here, right here is my microphone. A lot of people won't know that, but right here is my microphone. And I had like, a, my wife had a green shirt she doesn't wear anymore. So I covered the mic with that. and having That's it awesome. <laughs> just so it blends in. Yeah. Because I got tired of seeing the mic. And then this little green guy right here, my brother made this. It's that's awesome. That's like on my logo thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have, I try to have it in all my videos now, like before I would have it like off the side somewhere, but I'm like, you know what? I got to have that in my videos because it's a part of my podcast. Yeah. But it's like, again, the lighting is important. I'm just learning so much more, but it's, it's just so cool. And I feel, I'm sure you agree with me. Like when you do these little projects, put them out there, put them out on YouTube, put them out on the platform. So you, again, you see your progress from day one to day, even from day one to day 10. Like over those days you grow and people, all the people will see your progress and they'll, they'll watch your progress. And that's how you, you'll get more fans that way too, instead of just putting everything out perfect. Cause then it's like, where did you start? Like, did you start out this good? It's like, no, well, I had these bumps in the road. So they see your growth. Like me, I started out as just an audio podcast and now I'm a audio and video podcast. I guess a vodcast. I guess <laughs> if that's a thing. Yeah. It and sounds it, right. It's, it makes me enjoy it. Like I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, I loved it from day one, but I enjoy it and love it even more now just because I've grown more now and I'm learning a lot more now and it's a lot more fun. And again, with this, going back to this green screen, which I freaking love, another cool thing about it is like, I get to help promote others. Like By, by me doing this, people seeing these cool backgrounds, hey, where can I see these movies? And stuff like that. I want to check this stuff out. And you know, they get to see that. They won't forget it. Like When we're talking about something, they won't forget what we're just talking about if the conversation goes all over. Exactly, the yeah. Behind me. So, yeah, I know. I saw and noticed that right away. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> so cool. So I don't have to keep like repeating it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I was thinking of, 
either doing it like this, the still, or doing like the video thing. And when we record again, I'll probably do like a video thing of like the pictures kind of like changing, you know, back and forth to this or whatever we're talking about or changing from different scenes. But I was like, you know what, let me just do something simple for now. And then next time we'll do something a little bit more. And I'm learning more as I go. Yeah, no, of course. Of and course. It's just, well, I just want to say, like, I mean, the podcast, first of all, I love podcasts. Like, I'm a huge podcast guy. I have, I have like, two apps on my phone. Uh, anytime I'm working, cleaning, doing anything, yard work, oh. uh, I go for, I go for, <laughs> I'm a big hike kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I love putting them on in the hikes and um, anything. Like, I listen to movie ones. I listen to, like, um, social kind of things. I listen yep. to... Um, uh, sports, lots of sports stuff. I just, it's amazing. Like, it's so cool. And I love that there's so many, you know, like you put in a, like a very individual, small topic thing and there's like 15 podcasts for it. I'm like, Oh my God, it's awesome. Yes. So like, I, I love that. And I think that like, um, it's, it's, it's really cool. And, and, and the fact that like what you're doing, like, that's a big thing for me is <clears throat> what you said earlier is that like, I just, I, I really, it's, I really want people to know that like there's all this cinema being made all across this country mm -hmm. and the world, but, but like in our country, particularly, there's so much independent film being made and it's hard for the audience to find it because, you know, there's so much stuff out there. Amazon is, has a hundred thousand oh. movies, something like that. So like if I'm just flicking through and I'm like, I, I like like independent film. I, I don't have to watch. Not everything has to have like a Hollywood star in it. Oh, it's hard to find things, you know, it, it's hard to even know where to look. And so by, you know, your podcast places like this, where it's like, you're allowing people like me to have a voice and to say, Hey, connect and check out, you know, in our case, particularly horror, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, it's a massive thing. Cause it's, it's, you, you don't understand how big it is. Cause when I, when I first, my first move, I, 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 Sleepover we released I think in 2016 on Amazon and then 2017 I did um bloody drama back then I just didn't know anyone I didn't really have any access to anyone that I could talk to or like get get the word out on these films and it's it's just so hard to like get it out there but now by you know doing your podcast and places like that it's like my I can find people that I can at least go, Hey man, I, you know, that looks cool. I want to check that out or whatever. That that's a massive thing for me. Massive. And that's like one of my goals with this too, uh, not just for me to grow, but for my guests, if, if they have a platform, because sometimes I have guests on here that come on to do movie reviews. They're just, I'm not gonna say just horror fans, but they're horror fans and like myself and they want to come on to do a movie review and they don't have like a platform as far as like doing movies or their own show. But as far as like the people who do have that type of platform, my I want us all to grow. So I'm like, that's why I do stuff like this. And I look at it like, say you, you coming on here is going to get people that follow you to come check out my show just because you coming on here and vice versa. People that yeah. listen to my show and watch my show are going to check you out just because they check my show out. And they like both of both, both of those worlds trust each other's word. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like oh, I like what he does. I like what he does. So let me check this out. Yeah. And that's, that's like my goal for this stuff. That's why I am so like welcoming and opening to, coming on here, discussing your platform, whatever it may be, as long as it's horror, of course. And also in my Horror Surf 30 group, same thing, like sharing your stuff in there. If, even if it's another horror podcast, horror YouTube, movies, I don't – just share it in there, join the conversation so people can see it, people can check it out. And I, it's, it's how we help each other grow. It's how we help each other grow and get there, especially being independent and just, like, climbing that ladder. Because then, yeah. like, oh, this is, this is cool. And it's another cool thing I always think about, too, is, like, I feel somebody eventually is going to be like one of those next Hollywood stars or Hollywood directors. And it's cool that you could be like, Hey, I had them on my show. I had them on my show when they were, when nobody else wanted to listen to them, when nobody else wanted to give them a voice, I had, I, I might've helped them a little bit. Maybe they got to a bigger platform, you know, a bigger podcast or whatever. That's what really helped. But I had them, you know, I'm welcome. I'm open to anybody coming on the show. You could be Hollywood, or you can be I know that that's that that's in a lot of ways that's all I see with the actors I work with is that I mean you know I I I really would I, I would love to to like oh one of them like becomes big you know and does some big movie and stuff and I could be like I work with them I, I did a movie with them before they were famous and I think a lot of them have that talent you know that to, to get yeah. there it's just the exposure and and being found and and you know uh 
recognized for it. And it's so, I mean, that's the thing. All of this is so hard to get recognized. One, because you've got to kind of shine out from, from, you know, from all the other stuff, the noise going on around. And then two, you've got to be able to create stuff that's great enough that gets out there and gets seen kind of thing. So I remember um, it was so funny. Jared, did you watch Game of Thrones? Not really. I watched maybe okay. three episodes max. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I, I know. I just, I, I just, um, I, I, I found out that um, uh, in in 1999, I did a movie called Rope Walk, where mm-hmm. I was the, uh, I was the second assistant cameraman, mm-hmm. and the guy who shot Jaws, the cinematographer on Jaws, the shirt you're wearing, was the cinematographer on this movie That's who awesome. I got to work with. Yeah, Bill Butler. It was amazing. But I just found out, just I was on IMDb. And I saw my name linked to it. And I said, oh, yeah, I remember that movie. And it was such a great experience. And uh, Lena Headley was on it. But oh, she wow. was a nobody. Like back then. I didn't even, that's what I'm saying. When she was on the movie, like nobody was like, oh, she's famous. She was just 20, in her mid to late 20s, actress struggling. It was an independent film in New York. It came out in New York City. We, we shot in Nantucket uh, off of the coast of uh, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's so bizarre. Like I worked with Lena Headley when she was nobody See, and I probably partied with her. Like we partied with the cast. I was with the cast 24. They were all nobody. They were just like us. So like we would hang out with them. And I was like, how funny is it? My brother's a huge game of Thrones guy. So I called him and I told him and he was like, get out of here. I said, yeah, <laughs> that's, he, that's awesome. you know, just stuff like that. Like, like that's, you know, like those people, those faces behind you over your shoulder, like, you know, I mean, I would love to find out one day that, like, I'm friends on them on Facebook and all those. I'd love to see them post, like, hey, man, I got a role in this massive movie, yada, yada, yada. It's like, yeah. I'd be so freaking happy. I would promote it like crazy and be, like, so proud of them. And I'm the same I'm the same exact way when it comes to that, as far as, like, yeah, this person was on my podcast. And it, it, it's, it's so cool, though, again, going back to the whole world, word to mouth thing, as far as just, hey, I heard what you do for, like, a lot of people reach out to me now, like, hey, I heard what you do for independent movies as far as if you really back them, you really support them, and you can't, even if it's not just financially, but just as far as doing something like this, I'm like, yeah, I, I just love it. I really do enjoy it. And again, if we all were doing this, it would make it easier for us all to grow. Like, there's there's enough in this, in this type of, I guess I'll say, industry for everybody to grow from it. Like, you don't, it doesn't have to be just that 1%. Everybody can really grow from it. And what's so well, new- it's also, it's like, it's about recognizing, right? Yeah. Like that, that it's, I believe this, it's guys like you and guys like me that are, that are like the lifeblood of these industries. Why? Because we're, we're the ones that are on that like ground level, like mm-hmm. digging into holes and trying to find the new trenches to like the new areas. So like in, for, for someone like me, someone like you is, is the lifeblood because you love, you love the horror genre, you love film. And he loved talking about it. And if you didn't exist, if you, if those years back, your wife didn't get you that setup, and you didn't decide to jump into this, this arena, I wouldn't be here today with you. And I wouldn't be able to be exposed in this way. And like, it's, you know, it's huge to have people like you that are like, Hey, man, I really love this art form of podcasting. But I love talking about movies and giving these movies a, a venue to talk about. And it's, it's funny you say that because my brother was saying as far as for you guys more so with the whole indie scene, he was saying it's like the backbone of horror now because you guys come up with so many great, unique ideas for movies, <clears throat> even though you might not have the budget you want, but you have to, you have to tell your stories better more so than like a Hollywood story because you don't have that huge budget where you can just have like the big, you know, the big scenes, the big flashy scenes where you're just like, oh, wow, wow, wow. And it, I feel like it makes you better overall. So say that one day when those directors, whether it be you or any other director that's indie, really does blow up. <clears throat> They'll have, I've, I know you guys will still have that same passion because at the end of the day, you're a horror fan first. You're, yes, you're a director, but you're a horror fan first, which also draws me to these horror movies because it's like they're giving, you what, they're giving you what the fans want. I won't say every single independent movie is for every single horror fan out there because that's, that's just life. Like every single podcast is not for every single podcast fan out there. Yeah. But at the same time, like you guys really dig deep into a story and tell that story so well and so different than the Hollywood things. And I just appreciate it. I really do enjoy it. I really do love it. <clears throat> and I do love how we can all work together. Again, how I, I keep going back to us working together and growing. And it feels, it feels good to be like noticed and recognized little by little. It feels, it's kind of cool. Cause it's just like, Hey, like when I go to con- like the Scarecon thing, when I go there now, I'm recognized there somewhat. 
just because of me bringing my podcast there twice, but also just going there for the past few years. Like, hey, that's their story. Like, I get, here's a funny story from Scarecon. This, I went this past October. They had they used to have it in June and October. They had one in June and um somewhere in Massachusetts. I'm not 100 percent sure where. And then one in, <clears throat> in October is always in upstate New York, like New York State. Like last year was in Rochester, New York. And I went to the one in Rochester, New York. I was supposed to go to the one in June, and I was up for an award. And I wow. feel like I would have won an award, a podcast award, if I would have went, but I, we just couldn't make it. And the guy called me out. He's like, yeah, there's Sir Sturdy there. Could have won an award, but he didn't show up <laughs> or do something. <clears throat> but it was cool because, like, me and, the, like, I'm friends with the guy on Facebook. We never really had, like, a conversation conversation. But it was just cool to be recognized, just, like, walking in there and being recognized. And it's so rewarding. Like, I, I love it. That's one thing. I, I cannot wait for these cons to come back. And bring my pot, bring my platform there again. I was on so many panels, and the ups, ups, the ups about the panels that I was on is again, you get more recognition, and it's just like you get more time to speak. Like it's like a practice for public speaking in a sense, but you're talking about something you're passionate about, so it's not tough really. And then the downs about it is like there were so many. I had a few interviews I could have gotten, but because I was on, you know, I was busy, I couldn't do those interviews, which. You know they'll come event. They'll come. I know they'll come down the line eventually. It'll just been cool to be able to do it at the you know at the location and all that good stuff. I know they'll come eventually, either via Zoom or maybe in person one day. But it's it's just so cool to just kind of put yourself out there like that and be recognized to where people are just like awesome. Like I'm the type of person too where when I go to these like say if I was to go to a, say if there's a kind this weekend if I'm going to a kind if I'm not in any if I'm not in any panels. I'll go around and I'll go to the vendors as well and say, Hey, you know, I got a podcast table here. If you want to come talk for a few, even if you want to come talk for like 10 minutes, talk about your business, talk horror a little bit. And, you know, feel free to come over and talk a little bit and have some, have some fun with that and promote your business on there as well. Cause I, I just want, again, I want to see us all grow and I don't do it to try to get anything for free. I don't do it to try to get this. I just do it because I really love the genre and you know, it's, it's, it's just how you grow. It's how, how you help each other out. Another thing I do, is when I go to cons, I have friends from, um, let me see if I can find the hat really quick. Yep. Right here. They, these guys are out from, uh, St. Louis, the nightmare shop. Wow. And I've had these guys, like I consider them like family. I've, I've known them for about two years now and just watching them grow. They have like, they don't have a brick and mortar. So like everything they do is online, but watching them grow for the past two years and watching me grow and helping each other out. I told them like we signed each other business cards they sent me business cards for cons and my wife set the table up cause she doesn't trust me and my brother set it up cause she knows <laughs> stuff on there, which she's right. But you know, she set up the, set up the cards nice and neat. Other people sent me business cards and I don't charge them at all. Cause I, I actually stole the idea from somebody on Facebook in a horror group there, but they were like, you know, podcasters, this and the third, they're charging like per, I think it was like 20 bucks for the weekend. But I was like, look, I was like, just, you know, I was like, you know, that's a good idea. So I was like, people that I'm cool with that are in the horror scene, send me your business cards. And the, all I ask for is when, if you're going out to cons, they start in the third, I want to send you some business cards. You can just put my stuff out there and it just helps. And stuff like that really does help in the long run. It helps. So I sent them business cards and they're like, again, they're out in St. Louis. I'm in New York and they sent me business cards. So when I go to these cons, I'll put them out on my table. People grab them. And I love going home. Like when you spread out business cards on the table, I love going home to, with like little, less business cards than what I came with a lot less. Cause it's like, cool. It's, it's, it's like awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, at the very least, if I didn't get to get these interviews, I got to hand out some, you know, people came to my table, got some business cards. Yeah, it's all about networking and, and meeting people. And like, uh, you just got to be out there mm -hmm. with all this kind of stuff. You got to be out there meeting new people, finding what's going on. I mean, I'm really trying to grow in, in South Texas is where I live. And okay. I'm trying to grow down here and, and, and meet more filmmakers and more like-minded people. I mean, I, I write I, every film I've done. I write with someone else. Um, Domestic Hell. I wrote with a awesome writer, um, playwright, screenwriter out of San Antonio, Texas, named Ivy Lamb. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dem uh, Remy's Demons was uh, Josh Kaza, another incredible young, awesome screenwriter. And then I'm writing a new movie with a guy named Daniel Balmer. And it's like the thing is, is like you know, particularly Josh and I. Even though Josh isn't working on my new script. Josh and I are writing a TV series together, oh. you know, we're, we're developing other stuff, you know? So it's like, 
it's just like in our, in my world, it's like kind of what you were describing, but also like trying to find uh, people like Ronald Mercado was um, Robin in Remy's Demons. His name's right over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's a filmmaker. And so I love Ronald. <laughs> like I, I, I want Ronald to be like in everything I do, <laughs> like from this point on, like, mm -hmm. like I want him to either act or, you know, he, he wants to shoot. He shoots a lot, you know, DP me dp some stuff like help out like it's just building like people that like-minded people that want to make cool stuff that you kind of have a team mm -hmm. and you move forward i'm all about i'm always been like pushing for teams over the over my whole career you know and trying to have teams that can like orchestrate and get together and make films because the thing about film is it's so collaborative i mean there's so many people involved even my little minor films my two thousand dollar budget films you know you could see behind you there's what six names on that poster behind you mm -hmm. i mean you know that's not even counting all the actors that's not even counting all the people who came and worked on the film so it's just like you know in order to make that happen and for people like us that have our vision and we're like oh i want to make a movie and i want it to be like this we have to come out of the box knowing and trying to find people that like-minded that want to help kind of get to the same place we got to or, or help us get there you exactly, know exactly. and that's the thing like you were saying like for me, it's not that like it's my way or the highway because it isn't. I love collaboration. I want to talk. But I also like I got into this because I really wanted to tell a a a very specific story mm -hmm. and a very directed story. And and so and I don't I don't at this stage, I don't want to have someone over me going like, no, 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 that doesn't work. You should do this or and I'm paying for this, so you need to do this. I really like that freedom that I have to kind of explore subject matter. You know, because a lot of people, I don't think, would have jumped at a Remy's Demons. It's about uh, a, a man on, a, on the spectrum, the autism spectrum. Uh, it's kind of a quirky, uh, I call it a coming-of-age love story. Horror, mm -hmm. It's a coming-of-age horror love story. about and, he's, and the thing is, the guy, you know, Remy is, is in his late 30s. He's not a young guy, you know? So it's yeah. like but it's still a coming of age story. And, um, you know, these are movies, these are concepts that would be hard to sell to a studio or hard to sell to like yeah. a bigger production company. They'd be like, well, I don't know. I don't really see the market for it. And I, I, my thing is I don't, I'm not working from a market standpoint. I'm working from a standpoint of stories that I find interesting. And then I hope other people do just as I'm sure you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a podcast about stuff I think is interesting. And hopefully people join me on this journey. Yeah. I don't think you sit there and go, man, what's, what's going to get me the most views. All right. Let me do talk about that. It's like, I think if you're there, then you're going to probably bark up the wrong tree because you're not being honest or true to who you are or what your true sort of vision is. I agree with you a hundred percent on that. And it's, again, it's funny you say that. Cause like me with this podcast, it's pretty much, yes, it's horror and entertainment and laugh like my my goal for this podcast is when people listen to it not only to give them as far as like if we're doing a movie talking about a movie for them to check out that movie if if i love it or hate it for them to check out that movie or for them to just to get it be entertained that's like my main like i want them to be entertained listening to it laughing whatever so you know because some days i'm sure people listen to this podcast and they're going through a bad day and they got a good laugh at it like that at the end of the day and sometimes which i know we a lot of gems out in this podcast i'm just like you know what that that's a great idea that makes sense like that's like it's more than just the horror now i mean don't get me wrong the horror is still like the main the focus but it's yeah. more than just talking about horror now it's horror yes that's the that's what gets the conversations going and then as we have been doing jumping around but then getting back to horror but it's just like i want i want to put a smile on people's faces and I want to give a voice to the voiceless as far as the horror community goes to where they can come on here, whether that be somebody who I'm um, interviewing like you for whatever projects they have coming out or just a, a horror fan that wants to come on here and review a movie. And it's cool to get people involved because it's one of those things where it's like, there's a lot of podcasts that I listen to. I'd be like, it'd be cool to be able to call into this show and say this, you know what I mean? Like it'd be cool. To oh yeah. Yeah. You know, this show and say this. And then even like emailing into a show and having your, your email read is cool. But I'm just like, the what, well, I, I'm going to be honest. The reason why I started like that is because I, I mean, I have co-hosts, but I never had like a co-host I can record every single weekend or whenever I can record. Like, cause it's, it's tough. Life happens as we all know it. So it's like, Hey, I want to record now. Boom. Let's record. So I'm like, if I have other people coming on here, which I do, again, like I said, I do have co-hosts, but other people coming on here that want to come and record and talk some horror, cool. 
And it, again, like I said, it gives a voice to the voiceless as far as, hey, here's my here's how I feel about this movie, or hey, I have this movie coming out, or I directed this movie, I was in this movie, I'd like to discuss this, that, and the third. And it's cool to also now, which I'd like to do is get other, which you know, actors, actresses, directors, and all that who are actually on the scenes reviewing movies with not their films but other films with me, because you get a different you get a different perspective from every different person. But I feel I feel like your perspective will be way different because you direct movies than my perspective. I would do that in a heartbeat. I would love to do that. I could talk about film in any way, shape or form. I love it. So yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be amazing. And the thing is that just, just to jump in for a second, like um, I, I, we, we talked about, um, I I think you're going to do a review video at some point of Mm -hmm. Remy's demons. And it's like, I love, review videos generally i watch all all day and night on youtube like i love like review i i and i love review like i love to see my films reviewed because i learn so much from it you know like like even even your commentary about purple like it just i i i i i it, it helps me so much as a filmmaker to hear like people like you and other podcasters and and film review people like talk about this because it's so interesting the way you what you guys pick up on Mm-hmm. So like, I'm, I'm like, I can't wait, you know, like I, I, I push so hard for, for reviews. Cause it's, it's literally like, it's an education for me yeah. to be honest with you. That's why I, I watch a lot of YouTube film stuff because I learned so much. I watched the review videos. I watched the, the theory videos. I watch, I love the geeked out like Easter egg videos mm-hmm. where people talk about Easter eggs, which is by the way, a big thing for me, like I try to throw Easter eggs into all my movies because I'm such a geek about it on my on my own as a fan of movies. Yeah. I like when when I find I watch a movie and then I go go home. Uh, I'm trying to think like um, I don't know, but but like you know, I watch a movie and I go home and I actually I, I generally I'll, I'll after I see a movie that I really liked, I go home and I watch about five to ten YouTube videos about it to just see what they thought. That's to awesome. see what people are saying, to see what the communities are sort of like going like, oh, did you notice this? Or did you notice that? Like Domestic Hell, yeah. Domestic Hell was purely and utterly inspired by, by, um, by The Shining. Ooh. So if, if a Shining fan watches it, they'll pick up on there's, I think I counted, uh, I think 10, there's 10 clear cut Easter eggs in the movie of The, of the Shining. And it was so much fun for me as a film guy. Like, I'm just like you, by the way. It's the same thing. We just love movies, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and, and I, I, you know, I threw them in there because I'm like, I want people that if they invest in my films, I want people to, to be able to watch it and be like, oh, oh, my God, did you notice that? They, that's from The Shining. That's, a, that's an, 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 an Easter egg for The Shining. Stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's awesome, man. It's really cool. Now, ba- it's with the Easter egg thing really quick, I'm horrible with putting those out. And, I, like, I... I consider myself a horror movie buff to an extent. Like I, I'm never going to say I know everything about horror because nobody does. I learn about something new every day. Even a movie I watched 50 times. I'm like, Oh wow, that happened. That scene right there. But like, I just, I don't know what, like, I, I, I don't know if it's my memory. Like somebody will point out like, Oh, if you watch this movie, this happened in this. Yeah. They, or they, they showed this little thing in this movie. And I'm like, Oh, and you go back and watch. You're like, Oh, how, and you're like, how did I miss that? Yeah. So I, I do love that too. And then, I mean, as far as I have a bunch of videos out, so I do have a bunch of reviews. If you want to go over and watch those reviews, definitely all kinds of stuff. It's, it's again, it's so fun. And like back real quick, you said um, your wife was telling you about the story of Lala Rona. Just one real quick thing. Cause my wife is Spanish. So is your wife Spanish? Yeah. She's from Nicaragua. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm only asking that my wife's Puerto Rican. She's from Rochester, New York, but I get that was like a story that was told for yeah, them yeah. growing up. Yeah, and when you said it earlier, I, you kept like you were saying something, so I didn't want to cut you off. So I, I like wrote it down for myself just so I wouldn't forget. And I was like, his wife, ha- I'm not gonna say has to be, but she almost has to be Spanish because it's it's one of those, I don't want to say folk tales, but you know, one of those. Yeah, things. I never heard of it. I never heard of it in my life. Me? My mom, my mom's part Cuban, and 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 my dad's Jewish, but like I, I wasn't raised like my mom never brought it. You know, I never yeah. heard of it. And it wasn't until, like I said, my, my wife loves horror movies. She's actually probably the biggest reason I make these films. Okay. She, she, she could, she could definitely do well on your show. Cause she, she knows what she knows her stuff. And, welcome. um, always welcome, man. Yeah, no. And, and so she like would, ex- she exposed me to so many cool movies that I had never heard of back when we started dating. Mm-hmm. And, um, and one day we're just sitting around and my wife was like, you should do a movie about La Llorona. And I was like, 
what is it? And then she told me, she's like, oh, it's about this and this and that. I was like, ooh, I said, that's creepy. Like, that sounds super creepy. So that's what the movie Sleepover, it's loosely based. I want yeah. people to, you know, I don't want people that are know the whole folklore of and all the stuff about La Llorona would watch. Your wife, your wife would watch it and be like, wait, this isn't totally La Llorona. What's this guy talking about? <laughs> um, I, I, it was just loosely based and there's, you know, but, but, but yeah, I mean, it's stuff like that. Like uh, there's a guy um, here in San Antonio as an actor, writer. Um, he told me recently, he's like, man, San Antonio, like we, he, he goes, we need filmmakers down here to make horror movies. Cause we have so many, there's, you know, this city's very old Spanish, you know, like old school. It was part of Mexico for a while and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And there's all these old, old, old places. And there's all these creepy mythologies and like creepy stories about it. And he was telling me, he's like, man, if you ever need content, dude, I got a million stories. I was like, that's, I definitely need content. <laughs> I was like, please go ahead. No, that's that's really that's that's really cool, and I'm just again I'm I'm glad I remembered to ask you that question. But that that's Thank cool you, yeah. though because it's just like that. I now I can't wait to see what you do next with that content because I'm like, oh wow, that's that's an awesome story. Well, my wife, my wife, like like for particularly domestic hell, like I actually I went to her first. I was like I told her the whole backdrop, and I said, is this good? And she was like, yeah. She'll tell me she's hardcore. She'd be like, no, nah, it sucks. There's so many times I brought her stories, and she's been like. And I'm like, really? It's awesome. She's like, no, it sucks. Yep. And I'm my like, wife, ah. So wife. I brought Domestic Hell to her, and she was like, the, the premise, it wasn't named yet. Yeah, but I yeah, was like, yeah. what do you think about this premise? And she was like, oh, that's pretty, that's that's freaky, yeah. Mine's the same way, as, but more so with like certain movies. Like if, if I'm getting ready to do a movie review, she'll say, all right, she does not like comedy horror at all, horror comedy. So she'll be like, all right, is it a horror comedy movie? <laughs> yeah, she's like, all right, I'm not going to watch it. It's probably stupid and <laughs> they go on their, you know how they go on their rants for half hour. Like, you could have just said no, and that's it. You don't have to tell them 20 minutes <laughs> why. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so for those, I don't I don't even ask her anymore. But, uh, like, for just about anything, unless she's in the middle of something or watching something, for the most part, she'll, yeah, I'll watch it. But it's just as long as, you know, as long as she's free, not doing watching something or going to bed, whatever the case may be. But because she's, like, a huge horror fan, too. And which is great. So she 100%, she obviously 100% supports the podcasting and all that stuff. She won't come on the podcast though. She was like, just like, no, I don't really, she likes to do the behind the scenes. Like as far as, um, again, like the decorating, like before I had all my figures and stuff out before, when I first started this, like as, as my background, she likes doing that part of it. Or like when I get a table at a con, she likes decorating the table. Oh, that's awesome. is, like when we, when we went to Rochester, my brother, he lives in Colorado now. Him and his wife, my nephews moved out there about two years ago now, but he came this past October to come to the con and stuff. And <laughs> my wife, like at first I was asking her if she, cause she was up and down about coming to, to the con. She wasn't sure if she was going to come or not. And then she, you know, she eventually decided she was going to come. And I was like, well, you didn't trust me and Henry to, to set the table up. She's like, absolutely not. No, <laughs> absolutely not. She was like, I, and she's right, because what we what we would have done, like I had card holders. All I would have done was like set the cards out. I put candy on the table too for people to just come grab some candy. Set the cards out, set the candy out, and then just you know when we had to do our thing, do our thing. But she set it out nice and neat, kind of had things spread out and eat how it's supposed to. Be. You know how you have to have that women's touch for some things. Like, but she likes, she enjoys decorating. She enjoys doing that kind of stuff. And me, I'm just like, I'm with, I'm like the technical person. I'm the one who does the electronics and all that and the podcasting the actual podcasting so it it, it balance we balance each other out when it comes to that and the cool thing about it about this whole podcast thing though is going to the cons is my wife is not really a people person people person to an extent but from this con like there'll be times i leave my computer at the table and she's like you know i'll sit and watch it or whatever or this that and the third people come up to the table and she's like talking about the podcast which is just great and then yeah, like, that's amazing. Yeah. Going up and approaching people and talking to them at the con and stuff. I'm like, wow, you change. I mean, you change. Usually you're just like, they put on, they can put on like that mean face, like just leave me the hell alone. And that's it. <laughs> I just, and I'm just like, yeah, that's not going to help. But she's like the complete op, like the whole con, con at, but she does like the con atmosphere. Because again, she does love horror and she has fun with it. And my sister-in-law actually, cause she lives out in Rochester, her, and like her, her kids came out to the con too, because I had extra tickets. So they came out to the con and they all like hung out and sat at the table while me and my brother were doing a bunch of panels and stuff, which was cool. They walked around and stuff, but they were just hanging out there and just like, you know, people were coming and talking. And 
her her youngest son went over to one of the vendors. My wife was like, she was like, he, the guy was just talking. He was she was like, he was talking to the guy's ear off for about an hour. But the guy was so nice and cool because he had like wow. anime, anime stuff there too. And that's one thing I do love about these cons is they're like they're very very family friendly with these horror conventions. Yeah. And one thing I love about horror con like I've been to com small comic cons, I've been to smaller, you know, bigger and smaller horror conventions. The thing I like about horror, well, one, I'm a horror fan more than I'm a comic con fan, comic fan or whatever you want to say. But I feel with the with the comic cons, I feel like um, people who go to the comic con, not everybody, but I feel like people go to the comic cons, like say if you're going with your wife or your kids. Sometimes it's the just the husband or just the wife or just the kids that are a fan of that genre of stuff, so they're going there for support. And then with horror, I feel like it's the complete opposite. I feel like everybody that goes is a fan of that genre. Like, yeah, I'm going yeah. to this con, and you can kind of, you don't get a bad vibe in comic cons. Don't get me wrong, but it just it's just a different vibe. Like you go there, like when I go to a horror convention, I don't care if I go how many times I've been to the same convention, you just get like this excitement, like the butterflies and stuff, like there's excitement. There are comic cons. I'm not gonna say you don't get excited to go because it's cool to go, but it's just like, it's not the same. It's not the same. And you go to these the horror ones. Everybody there is just like excited to be there. Everybody there is really, really 100% wants to be there, and you can just kind of feel it in the air. And it's, it's, it's just so awesome. It's so awesome. It's so welcoming, and I, I freaking love it. I miss it. <laughs> I freaking miss it. I um, I have to, I have to wrap up because I've got to, okay, no got to run to something. Is that okay? I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, 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 of course. We've, we've been talking for about a little over an hour now. That's, that's perfectly fine. If you want to, we can wrap up. I was going to say, if there's anything you want to plug, feel free. And when you get a chance, send me your links. And when this episode comes out, I'll have the links in the description. But yeah, else? no problem. Um, man, first of all, thank you so much for having me and doing what you do. Honestly, seriously, it's huge for us. All the horror world appreciates it, believe me. And keep doing it, doing it the way you're doing it and keep excelling and moving up. You, you're you know, it, it's just amazing, dude. And um, anytime you ever want me back on, just reach out to me. Let me know. I'm also can't wait to see that review. Um, that's awesome. And, and like I said, what you're doing for me, I can only speak for myself, is 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 more than you than you can imagine. Uh, how how big a deal it is. So I just want to get that out. Uh, secondly, uh, for the viewers and everybody listening on the podcast circuit, um, you know, check out my films um, on Amazon Prime. I've got. Domestic Hell is available on Amazon Prime Streaming. Bloody Drama, if you're into the slasher market, um, is a uh, pool party, sorority pool party slasher movie I made a few years back. And then if you're into sort of the POV um, found footage kind of style movie, I did a movie called Sleepover. All these movies are ultra low budget, but they're made with heart and, and with care. And then finally, uh, my newest film, uh, Remy's Demons, right now is available on, on DVD, on Amazon Prime, um, Best Buy, uh, barnesandnobles.com, tcm.com. So it's in a multitude of places. It's produced by Scream Time Films, another great horror venue. So if you're, they've got a ton of different horror titles there, uh, screamtimefilms.com is where you can find that. And please come follow, uh, check me out on Instagram at, at Bressler Productions. Um, and over at, at Bressler Productions, you can check out all, like I post a bunch of photos, behind the scenes photos and awesome. updates on what's going on with our productions and everything. And and again, you know, thank you so much, man, for, for one, you know, letting me on today and talking to you. I could do this all day, as you know, as mm -hmm. I'm sure you could. Yes, and, uh, and thank you so much for, given a platform as i said earlier and um I, I can't wait to do this again listen man thank for first thank you for coming on because without you guys without my guests i don't have a show so without you guys as far as creating these awesome movies without other fans coming on here just to talk horror so thank, i greatly greatly appreciate that you're always welcome i definitely want to get you on here for a movie review and everybody, everybody go check out all of his stuff that he just mentioned i will have the links posted in the description when this episode comes out and real quick, for me, I have a Horror Research 30 group on Facebook. Go on there. Join the group. Anything horror-related, feel free to share anything and everything horror-related, including your own work. I have a Horror Research 30 page, which is just pretty much gives you updates about what's going on with me, horror-wise. So please give that a like. My YouTube channel, Horror Research 30, you get to see our beautiful faces. Not only here, but you get to see us. And a bunch of other horror videos on there that I post. Check out my YouTube channel. 
as far as podcasts, the platforms, anywhere you can listen to a podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, everywhere you can listen to podcasts, you should be able to hear my podcast. I have a Twitch channel, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And if you ever want to be a guest on here, shoot me an email, horrorwithsir.sturdy. Again, that's horrorwithsir.sturdy at gmail.com. We can make something happen. And again, thank you so much for coming on. I had a great time. And again, I could do this all day, as like you said, as you could. And as always, I'll see you.